you hear me? It's good? Okay. Yeah, thanks, thanks for having me, and it's really good to be here, and uh, thanks, Wimby, for inviting me. Um, we did some things in advance to the conference, so Wimby also asked me to maybe send in a design for the T-shirt, so I th he knew what I'm doing, uh, so I'm trying to pack code in a shape. Uh, so I took the uh, forefrontal logo and tried to, like, make it executable by placing symbols in there. So what you see here was like one of the first attempts. Uh, it's not that one that you see in the t-shirts, uh, it will be the next one, but this is actually like JavaScript code that you can execute. Um, I don't want to like read it now, but I hope to make it easier for you at the end of the presentation to like read what's going on. So this, this was like the first attempt, this like small one. I, Squaled it up and added like a version that looks like this. This has like um, brackets, um, you could sign there. There's an X and an, a dollar sign in there. And like the final version is this one. This is like using JS fuck code. I'm not sure if you know this. So it uses only like six different characters uh, or symbols um, to like write JavaScript. And you can actually execute all of the examples and it will output like all the same strings. So this is like kind of riddle. Uh, there are some t-shirts left. If you're the one who can like read it and send a tweet to me or uh, Remy, then you might get a t-shirt if it's still there in the right size. Yeah? yeah, yeah right is it there? Exactly. Okay. So just, a, just a, like a hint. If you start with the first row and the sec like, like the two last rows, then it might be easier for you to like guess what's going on in, a, uh, in between. Um, not sure if you see this. I have some reflection. Is, is it possible to dim the light a bit? No, no, it's not. But it's okay for you. Maybe it's only my my perspective here. Okay, let's go on. Um, let me introduce you. Uh, so I'm Martin Klepper. I'm from Hamburg. Um, I do like different stuff. Um, I have my own website at uh, m1k.com. I also have my Twitter handle mk. Um, feel free to follow me. And definitely check out my website where I like collect all the examples that you see, uh, that you will see later. Um, I usually give talks on like different topics. Um, so one thing that I usually do like for my day job is talking about Maps APIs, specifically like uh, Google Maps related um, APIs, because my company. Um, that I founded some years ago, we are, we are like a Google Maps API partner, so we're doing a lot of the tracks pages for the Google um, team. We're also like the, something like the Earth View project that you might know. Um, so this is like what I do during my day job. But I also like tweet and like um, for a presentation about code golfing. Um, this is what I do in like my, my free time or like my spare time. Um, so code golfing is like a kind of sport where you try to solve a problem, a programming pro a problem in a shortest amount of characters. So you set yourself a goal and try to make it as short as possible. I, I will explain you this stuff in detail. So um, this works for like all kind of programming languages. So Perl is quite good for this because you can write really effective um, and short uh, Perl code. Um, but I usually focus on JavaScript and also organizing um, HHS. This is the Hamburg JavaScript user group. I'm also involved in JS Unconf, um, which will happen next year for the third time. Uh, and today I'm going to talk about code calligrams, as I call it. And there are some people call it like this. There are other terms like quines, and I try to give you an idea what this is all about. So calligram is usually something drawn or like written and it has a nice shape and also it's like a kind of picture. It's a mix of picture, words, and like type. So one thing that maybe some of you know um, is this. Um, I gave a presentation, I would say, uh, two years ago or three years ago. I'm not, not quite sure. For two years ago or something like this, okay. And um, it was about this code. So you see there's a script tag uh, and then there is JavaScript in between. And inside of the JavaScript, you see some like um, block comments, and they make a shape of like a circle. And in this circle, there's a like static version of, of the globe. And once you run this in the browser, um, you see the exact same input, but it's changing. So this is something called Quine. So a Quine is a program that will output its own source code. And in this example, it's not only like only outputting it; it will 
look like this. So you have a spinning globe, a 3D globe, um, that rotates inside of this code. And there's no external libraries, it's only, and no external resources, so it's all in the code itself. Um, another example was this. This is called Mandel code. Um, so this is the source code. Once you open it in the browser, you have to click it, and once you click it, then you see like an animation that's going on for about like two minutes. And it's showing you like um, a fractal, and it zooms in, into this fractal. Um, until like a point where the resolution or like the float position of JavaScript is not enough anymore. So you see things are starting to change in a second, and this is like the stage where it finds its like, like final form, um, and where you see like the whole thing is breaking up. This will be, I think, soon. So this is like what I do. I try to paint things with the code, so this is like the, the moment where you don't have the precision anymore. And uh, usually I do, things for, for uh, conferences and try to do something new like this logo, for example. Um, another project I'm quite uh, into was jsfuck.com. So I was not the one who like, found out the basic principles, but I like, set up um, a website and I like, re-implemented all the rules. And the idea here was, or there was a discussion in the forum and the, the question was how many different symbols do I need in JavaScript to execute any code that you like. And it turns out that you only have to use uh, brackets, plus sign, um, square brackets, or it's parentheses, plus sign, square brackets, and then ampersand. And the tool that I did is um, on jsfuck.com where you can enter your code, for example, a lot one. You hit the encode button, make sure that you hit eval source, and then you get an output. In this case, this whole thing is added one. So you can copy and paste this into your console, execute it, and there's no need for other transpilers or stuff. So it, it's like valid JavaScript that executes. And as I said before, this is like what you see in a logo. So, and I'm gonna go in detail how this works later, but I'm gonna show you some, some other stuff that I did recently. So um, I was traveling a lot in the last two years on conferences. I was invited to a conference in Russia. Um, I tried to create like this Russian star and use uh, the Cyrillic alphabet to write JavaScript. And if you look close, so this is an HTML page and there's the body unload. And inside there's JavaScript, but there's no like statement or nothing that they're used to. And it's only using like Cyrillic um, letters and are there any numbers? No, there are no numbers, but there's a special like Unicode symbol, the star in the middle. And once you open the page, um, it will give you an output like this. So it will alert a star. Um, I was in, in, um, in Israel early this year, and this is what I did there. So I focus on like different kind of alphabets. Um, it was like, I, I show you how this works in a second, but I try to like, find out how it will look like if you use not Latin characters. And in this case, it's also quite special when you're using the Hebrew alphabet because the Hebrew alphabet is written, or once you write this, and also when you display it in the browser, it's written from um, right to left and not as we used to from uh, left to right. So this will also just alert one in this case. Um, if you use like one of the Japanese um, alphabets, in this case it's katakana. It's also possible to, to, do, the, to do the same. Um, here I used like tabs to separate these columns. So it looks like they are written from up to down, but actually they are from left to right. So you can copy this, paste it, and it will also give you like an alert one. Um, but these examples were more like, like finding out that it is possible to write like really simple code, and it was always this alert, alert something. And I've been to Singapore last year at the JSConf there, and I wanted to create something special based on like this um, Asian alphabet. So I came up with this. Um, you might know this theme um, from the Matrix movie, and so you open up the page, and what you see is this. You see some code falling down, and what, it's basically what you see in the matrix intro sequence. It's a, uh, called the reigning code sequence. And you, if you like, look really close, then you see different Asian characters, and in the top, 
there's a script tag and then a button to it. So this is actually the program itself. So it's also a client, so it outputs itself and will animate itself. Um, and you see like different types of alphabets. So on the top there is the hiragana alphabet and then there are several kanjis and there's some hiragana again and then there's the closing script tag. So the question for you would be, how the hell do I write JavaScript without Latin characters? <laughs> Not sure if you know how to. Um, actually, there are many ways, and like the two ways that I want to explain you are escape sequences, and the other one is something that I call playing Scrabble. So if we have a character in our code, what we can do is um, using Unicode ex uh, escapes to write the same like letter. So in this case, it's like a backslash u, and then it has a four-digit hexadecimal code for the, for the um, uh, character. What you can do then, like everywhere, it doesn't have to be in string, it's like everywhere you can replace this and write this, for example. So backslash u and 0061 and so on and so on. And you might guess that this is also a lot one. Um, the cool thing here is it doesn't work for Unicode uh, symbols, uh, uh, characters only, but it also, uh, not, not for ASCII, but also for Unicode. So this is the reigning, uh, I think the, the um, kanji for rain, so it's possible to write this with a higher level Unicode. Um, yeah. And th these are the Unicode escapes, but there's also a way to use hex escaping. So if you use a backslash x, you can also like specify a, the hex value, but this will give you back only a specific range until like the, the ASCII thing is done. So there's no way to define more than two uh, numbers here. Um, the bad thing is that this doesn't work in the, like in the code itself. It has to be in quotes. So it's only possible to do this inside of quotes. And actually, if you use a new uh, ES6 or ES2015 e, uh, um, template string, it doesn't work anymore. So you're only allowed to use Unicode escapes. Oh, actually, the hacks are still working, but the next one is not working. So, because there is this one, not sure if you know this. I came across by research, like trying to hide things, because this is the first, one, first example where a is transformed to something that doesn't have any like other Latin character in there. And this is called the um, octal escaping. And what you do is just a backslash and a sequence of numbers from zero uh, to seven. So it's an octal re representation of the character that you want to like hide or show. Um, and you can like combine these again and do this, for example. Um, so this is ffconf in this case, so it will just output ffconf, um, which is a string and not boring. The conference is not boring, but it's just a string, so you want to have something more advanced, and this is a really cool, tricky thing that was in the web somewhere, and I try to like combine it with these octal sequences, escape sequences, and if you look close here, you see there are some brackets going on, and these, these um, square brackets, parentheses, and strings, and you have a bunch of like um, numbers, and that's it. So there are no Latin characters, and once you translate these numbers into the actual um, characters, then you see, okay, this is there inside, and if you j just write this in one line, you see uh, empty array map constructor alert one in this case. And if we try to figure out what this means is, if you get the map function, or it could also be filter or something, from an array, then this is a kind of function. And if you have a function and get a constructor, then you get back like a function constructor. I'm not sure if you know this, you should, uh, because like one basic thing in JavaScript, you can use the function constructor um, to pass different arguments. You can, you can pass a code and you can pass like arguments in there. And what it does basically, it's kind of like replacement for eval. So what you can do here now is like eval any code that you like. So this is like the escape sequences. Um, playing Scrabble is, I would say, a bit more fun. 
Um, and this is like the, the basic concept of, of um, JSFuck. So what you can do is like transforming different options into other ones, and if you combine them and add things, then really strange things happen in JavaScript. And if you have an array, for example, an em empty array, and say not an empty array, then it's false. Um, if you say not not an empty array, so which is not false, then it's true. Clear. Yeah. And what's cool here is that once you add an other empty string to it, you could also like use an empty array, but in, to make it simpler, I add a simple string to it. This will convert the false and true to strings false and true. And you can use this then to access different characters. And uh, I didn't explain it here, but you could also like instead of writing zero, you can say plus not false because this is zero, or if you say, if you want to get a one, this is plus not not zero, uh, not not empty array. So you can access different characters here and get the T, the R, the U, the E. And once you try to combine different letters from different words, in this case, like the, this, it's, it's zero based, so it's the second from false, the third from false, the fourth from true, the second from true, and the first from true. Um, and you line up to Mac, then you see, okay, here I got the alert. So, <laughs> and once I got this, it's cool. Then, then you start to search for different characters and see what's possible. And because you line up things like this, I call it Scrabble. So Scrabble would be possible. They are not all characters, but Scrabble is possible from false, uh, to see from object, you have true. There's also like undefined function, not a number. These are like basic things that you get, but it's only like half of the alphabet uh, that you get out. But yeah, you can combine them in any ways by just like appending them by using the plus operator. And you can write ffconf, so ffconf would be a false function object, object undefined, undefined. And there are other ways, because the f is, for example, it's in false fun function undefined in different ways. And the most important thing here is that it is possible to get strings concatenated to constructor. And once you have this, then you can get the map. Or map is actually not possible because there's no way to get the app, uh, the M, but it's possible to get filter. Uh, filter is a function, and if you combine this with the constructor, then you can do the same thing. So this is wrong here. This should be like empty array, filter, constructor, and then you pass any code that you like. And it will execute without like being possible to read it by default. Yeah, so this was like one thing that I came up and it was kind of like historic thing. So I started with this JS1K contest where you like try to do something cool in 1K of, ca uh, of JavaScript and I got involved into the 140 bytes project, not sure if you know this, but it was like what can you do in a tweet? Uh, and then I found out how to write JavaScript with six different char characters. And the next logical step would be like, after having only six different characters, would to be to do this. And that's what I call invisible code. So there's something new. And if you open up um, this URL, then you see a really short um, HTML page. So if you look at the source, it's only like a line wide. There are no more lines. It's just one line, and it's about like 80 characters. And there's the body unload, eval, eval, escape, replace, whatever. And if you open it, then you see there's something more going on. In this case, it will like draw uh, the game of life in your browser. And it will take for more than 1,000 generations until it gets stable. And if you look closer, then you see, OK, this escape empty string doesn't make sense. And in this case, the escape is not, or the string is not empty. It, it contains like different characters. But these characters are not visible to like your editor or your like default uh, browser source because they are in a really low like range of the ASCII uh, set. And when you escape this, and this is like the final thing that it's hidden behind, and it's only like 215 <coughs> characters, so this is like the real game of life that's behind. Um, so how, how do we write invisible code? Um, the idea was quite simple. So the first idea uh, that I had was using white space. So white space is also not visible directly, but it still takes up some space. So if you go 
through the ASCII set, you see the first page is quite useful. There are these new line characters. We could use spaces on, so we use, can use the tabs and then combine them and like changing the, the values into something more meaningful. Um, but as I said, the, the problem is that it still takes up space. So if I would have this in the string, then the string would be, or like this, like in the quotes, it would take up some space. Um, so I can continue to search for some more useful, useless, same thing, um, in this case, uh, characters. And on the next page, you come to the device control characters. No, actually, it's not characters, but these are device control sets, and um, they are not visible at all because they have no like width. So if you add this kind of characters, uh, then you don't see it because like if you uh, put quotes around, they don't fill up like any, any space. And to hide them into a code and to like <coughs> encode your, your original source um, and decode again, I use this kind of script. So this is like the basic thing that's inside of the HTML page that I just recently showed. So we have uh, escape of this like hidden sequence then we're gonna replace the third and the sixth character, move them together, and put a backslash x in front of this. Um, to, it's not, not that easy, but to make it clear, just an example, so we have like 16 different um, hex values. Um, we use the second page, so it's like 001 always in the beginning, and if you use different one, um, and then say, okay, escape, then it will give us back a percentage signed and then the hex value in this case. And as we said, we want to take out the third and the sixth characters. We get this, so we get rid of the percentage one. And we move them together into groups of two. So we have this and put the backslash x in front. And once we have this, uh, it's still <laughs> a little more. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, I was so happy to found this. Um, and I use Chrome all the time to debug, but then I come across control character, especially it's, it's mods control, control character visibility visible. So this is something in Firefox or like other browsers. And instead of seeing this in the source code, uh, you get this. And I thought, shit, what's going on? So all like the last two weeks, or I don't know how much time I spent on this, it was like all wasted. Because, I, I looked this up, because within Mozilla, some people like the idea of displaying counter characters. I don't know why, because of me. Um, <laughs> it's a good thing to see this. Um, so you see like tiny boxes with the actual like ASCII code in there. But I thought, okay, maybe it's still like possible to, to trick them and I was looking for some more, and I was in, in, in Tel Aviv earlier this year, and I created a project, I wanted to create a project called Aleph. I, if, you want, if you're inter interested why I did this, it's like a longer presentation, but really short wrap up is in, in Hebrew, the um, Aleph is, is the first letter, but it's also like the number one, so they use the same symbol for letters and uh, for numbers, so at least from, from zero to, nine, if I'm wrong, uh, if I'm right, so on. Um, but this is like only one meaning, this is the official meaning in an alphabet, but in the Kabbalistic way of seeing things, the Aleph is also the, like, the symbol that means the origin of the universe, and it's also um, a number that contains all other, it's a symbol that contains all other numbers. So I thought it's a good Kabbalistic theme and created um, this kind of code. Um, so this is the source code. You see something strange going up in the top and some more strange things going up in the, in the bottom. And um, if you look close, you see there are two Alephs and one of the Alephs looks a bit stranger than the other. And this assignment is like Aleph means Aleph. So I try to like put this all in one character. And still it's the same idea of having this like um, game of life being generated here. Um, and like the way I did it was like cutting down the 16 different characters um, to only eight. 
and I found a set that works in all browsers in a more like higher um, Unicode set that starts with the 144, so 1440 till 1447. So I could use these symbols and combine them because they didn't take up any space. And if you look at them, they are still visible. That's how they look here. If you scale up a bit, you see them. Um, these are called chants and or chantillation marks. And for some accident, they are also like from the Hebrew way of writing. And they are used to give rhythmic speaking or rhythmic instruction uh, to words or sentences in, in the Bible. So um, you put them on top of words to define like how you speak it in a rhythmic way. And as I said, the cool thing is they don't take up space. They are still visible, but you can like overlap them. There are other things like this, um, these, um, how they're called, um, surgons. Uh, like the, this um, two dots on an A that you can combine in Unicode, but they, they stack up. And these are really special because they don't stack up but overlap. And you can like hide all the code in one symbol. And this is what I call more like a Kabbalistic way of thinking because it was also like the Aleph is the one symbol that contains all other letters or all other numbers and I was able to like put everything in one place. Yeah. So that's what you see. It's also like a like kind of big bang. So you have like one entity in the top and then it's expanding somehow in a visual way. Okay, 10 minutes left, that's good. Um, I'm quite happy that Marcy was talking about uh, alley or accessibility and um, one conference I've been to recently, there was also a talk by a blind um, woman and I wanted to do something new then and took up this theme of being blind and like this invisible things and make something visible again, but not using the characters that, that we're used to. And in this case, the project is called Mona Lisa. And I wanted to draw something. So I got a Mona Lisa painting from Wikipedia. And if you look at this, it's like 400 kilobytes. So usually I'd focus on if it's more than a kilobyte, I don't, I'm not interested, so. Um, I took this and tried to like reduce the size. I use a really bad, um, or I, I shrink the size so it's more pixelated. It's still like 12 kilobytes. Um, I tried to use a GIF with some random noise. This is like 440 bytes. It, that's okay already. And if you get rid of the uh, like randomness, it's 235 bytes. But I thought, okay, this is not, you might guess it if you know that's the Mona Lisa, but it's still, it's, it's strange. So I got back to the JPEG, used a really bad compression rate, uh, which get it down to like two kilobytes. And I was not happy with that, but I tried like different other um, formats and I came across the WebP compression algorithm, algorithm which is super uh, efficient and I was able to get it down to 589 bytes and if you play around with this command line attributes then like the worst thing that you can get is this so it's 244 bytes but if you look close and if you compare this visually if on a like same size if you don't scale it up it's still like possible to, possible to see it and um, that, that, that was from like the, the JPEG wise perspective or like the image perspective. But I usually try to get this into an HTML page and use some JavaScript. So I create an end, um, a page that not only shows the picture, but will also like try to animate it and make it more like artistic. And once you open this source, it looks like this. And once you open the page, you see things going on that looks like this. So this is still like 500 uh, or less than 500 or about 500 uh, bytes. And it's like painting. So first of all, you have no idea. But over time, it evolves. And you see like the painting coming out. And it's also like a photograph of things. If you, have, if you watch it too much, then it will also disappear. So it's an animation. Um, if you take a frame, uh, it looks like this. And I made use of the Prey character set and used just different um, characters here to like toggle on and off different like LEDs or like, like bits in there. And the whole page that you see in the back um, is this. So this is a bit strange because like the first HTML that you see is 
in between somewhere. So there's a canvas with an idea, a body with an idea, an image with an onload handler. And the image is strange, even stranger, because the source points to a hash. I'm not sure if you noticed, but if you have a hash, then it refers to the same document. And what happens is that this HTML page has an image that loads the HTML page as the image source. And this is the uh, image itself. So it's a WebP thing. And the cool thing is, so once you reach the, the end of this image, you can add whatever you like. You can hide like your own secret messages, but you can also like put in um, HTML and JavaScript and use the same thing combined um, as an HTML and an image. You can also like get um, CSS in there and other JavaScript. So what, what I used here is, is using this um, HTML thing, have the onload handler, and the onload is quite simple. It gets the context of the canvas, draws the image in an interval by changing the inner HTML of a pre-tag uh, with the image data. So that's basically it. It's, uh, there's, there's more information and I'll talk about. I don't have time, only six minutes left. You can look this up here. And I want to show what I did new for this conference. And I found some inspiration on the website. Um, if you reload this, I hope you see this. So if you reload this, there are these stars going on. Not sure if you recognize this, but I saw it like in the first place, um, which is super cool. So it's a kind of Star Wars or star theme. And I looked up the source. First thing I saw was this pony. Uh, <laughs> second thing I saw was this pony. <laughs> And in the network tab, I saw, OK, there's a cool star field, JS. Oh, but this is more than 1K. Uh, <laughs> and if I look at the code, you can compress it. So actually, it's 8 kilobytes, uh, and it's gzip 3K. And this is like the if you put it into Akify.js, I refactored it. It's still like 1K, or this is like 800 bytes. And I decided, OK, don't try to refactor it again, um, but start from scratch. And what I came up with is, is this. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this is 168 bytes. Um, and it's like a full HTML page with all things. It, it has um, HTML, JavaScript, and CSS in this case. And, uh, but it's super simple. So what you see is here. That's what, what you see. Nothing more, but nothing less. Yeah. Um, but as you see in you know, like the first slides I showed you, I also like this visual code calligram uh, style, where you have like a more visual um, source code. And I, oh, I don't see it. Do you see it? Oh, there's some explanation going on. Oh, I'm going to explain you what's going on. So it was the first time I had to do, I had to draw something on a black background. So usually I put stuff on a white background. And this is this cool DHTML thing from IE. The BG color zero makes it black. And text will like define the text color. And if you, white is too long. So but 10 is a bit shorter. <laughs> yeah. And what else goes on? So there's a, this is the, the JavaScript, and like the basic thing in here is it, I'm using really new technologies like uh, Translate 3Ds to animate the stars. Um, look it up here at the stars. And coming back to the logo, so I decided to have the same shape, uh, but make some more meaningful things. And the source that I created is this. So this is, again, HTML. Um, CSS and JavaScript all in one place. It's, I'm not sure, it's like 500 uh, bytes, something like this. And if you open this up, it's, then it's a quine again. So it will, not, not actually a quine because it doesn't show its own source, but it shows its own shape. And if you see this, then you see this like cool perspective logo. But if you wait for some time, then you see like a star field going on and the shape. <laughs> It's for you. <laughs> That's it. I'm having like two minutes left. Really quick. HTML. Uh, there's some. There's, there's a string that will be executed on a timer. That's the green thing. Look it up on m1kff. 
uh, FFConf, and uh, the only left <laughs> question is, why do I do this? So there might be some other questions, but I'm running through this quite quickly. Um, it forces you to like go over the limits that you're used to. So it, it, you, you set yourself um, like a size limit, and you have to hit this. And once you hit it, you set yourself the, like the next limit. And it's really good to like work on this kind of limits because you have to learn the language and like have to discover new parts and you have to use your curiosity to like learn new things that makes this possible. Because like every time I start this kind of project, I'm not sure if this will work, but I try to find new aspects that helps me to, to solve that. Creativity, so it's fun to do this kind of project and it's good to do that because there's no pressure from outside. So um, creativity is something that comes from, from yourself. So there's no client and no boss that forces you to do this like big website, shopping cart, whatever. And this is more things that come up, you have an idea and you want to create something from yourself. And the other thing is that you have to focus on an idea. So this is something um, useful that I take back to my daily work because there's, you can't like put in spaceships and super fancy alien things if you want, just want to have a spaceship. That, and this is something that helps me to focus on my daily work. So if I want to create a project and finish a project, I have, have to fa focus on the most important ta uh, task to get it done. Yeah, and that's it. Uh, except the community, so this is really great. Um, only 40 seconds left, but I have to mention many people that helps me out and everything is open source, people doing talks, you can look at the source, learn things and it's really cool. And I would say try it out, uh, get a simple script and make it as short as, pos uh, uh, as, short as possible. Um, there's this 140 bytes project that still has a Wikipedia page with all the useful information, all the tricks, how you can like minify um, your code. And there's this JS1K content that runs every year and they have um, like this content, you have 1K of, ca uh, of JavaScript to do like crazy demos. And that's it. So thanks. And yeah, thanks for having me. Look, that's my website, my Twitter.